The rift between the northern tribes of Israel and their cousins to the south in Judah is complete. The once unified kingdom is no more. It is a shadow of its former self, and an unrelenting period of upheaval lies ahead. To the north, Ahab, Israel's most notorious king, ascends the throne. The conflict between Ahab and a prophet named Elijah is emblematic of this period in Israel's history. God sends messengers like Elijah and his successor Elisha to challenge Israel's increasingly corrupt rulers and to summon people back to him. But the northern kingdom plunges further into idolatry. God employs increasingly drastic measures to get their attention while refusing to fully abandon them to their own devices. During the reign of Ahab, Israel is gripped by a brutal drought. Only after a dramatic showdown between Elijah and an army of pagan prophets does it finally reign again. But not even this definitive proof of God's power is enough to turn the hearts of Ahab and his wife Jezebel. Elijah is forced into hiding. At the end of his rope, and convinced he is utterly alone, he learns a stunning truth. There are 7,000 others like him in Israel who have not bent their knee to the Canaanite god Baal. There is a remnant determined to remain true to their covenant with God. To the south, in Judah, it's more of a mixed bag. Some of the kings are faithful to God. But faithfulness is a sliding scale in this case. Even the best kings of this period are divided in their loyalties. The kingdoms of Israel and Judah periodically join forces to fend off increasingly dangerous enemies. One, Ben-Hadad II of Aram, modern-day Damascus, lays siege to the northern capital city of Samaria. The situation is so dire that some, trapped inside, resort to eating their own children. The city is miraculously spared, this time, and eventually a new king, Jehu, vows to rid the nation of Baal worship, along with the last surviving members of Ahab's family. Jehu is rewarded with the closest thing to a stable dynasty that Israel ever experiences. Four generations of his family rule the northern kingdom. But the writing is on the wall. God allows Israel's enemies to gradually chip away at its territory. It seems as if nothing will get through to them and draw the nation fully back to God. 